OK, so now what we're going to deal with is amplitude. Amplitude represents the half distance between the max values and minimum values of your graph. So we're going to get a little bit into it. And we can say that the, amp um, the amplitude is represented by the absolute value of a. All right. So the amplitude is represented by the absolute value of a. And let's kind of go back to when we were dealing with functions. Remember we were talking about dilations, transformations, and all that kind of stuff. Well, when you looked at functions, and let's kind of go back with something that uh, we're maybe similar with. Let's look at the function y equals x squared. Now remember, there's a lot of things that happened when we multiplied x squared by a factor. right? When I said y equals 1 half x squared, well, what that did was, when we looked at our graph, that actually, so here's x squared. x squared has some kind of pattern similar to that. When we looked at 1 half x squared, what that did was that actually horizontally stretched our function. So our graph was looking more like that. And if I made a transformation y equals 2x squared, what that did was that gave us a horizontal compression. And so it made our graph much skinnier than our original paragraph in the non-mathematical description. So remember, when multiplying a function by a factor, it has an effect on its graph. And when we multiply our function by our factor of a, it's going to do that exact same thing. So let's look at a cosine, or let's look at our sine and cosines and see what's going to happen with that. So first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the table first of all, and then I'm going to actually look at the graph. So let's take a look at, let's make a, a table of x and sine of x. All right? And so far, we've dealt with the same type of functions, or the same values. The first one we always dealt with is 0. And we knew that when x equals 0, sine of x equals 0. Then at pi over 2, sine equaled 1. At pi, sine back equaled 0. At 3 pi over 2, sine equaled negative 1. And at 2 pi, sine equaled 0 again. Right? Now, let's take a look at what would happen if I multiplied this by a factor. Rather doing it, rather doing an xy table, what if I did sine or 2 times sine of x was my function? What would that change with my points? Well, what you can see now is 2 sine of x, sine of 0 would still be 0. Multiply 2 would still give me 0. However, this 2, a sine of 1, a pi over 2 would give me 1, then multiply that by 2, and now I'm up to 2. S multiply by 0 again would still be 0. 2 times negative 1 gives me now negative 2, and then 0. And let's see what would happen if I multiply by 1 half. Again, we're going to come up with the function of 0 is not going to change. You're still going to have 0, even if it is 1 half of sine of x. So therefore, if I multiply one, sine of pi over 2 would be 1, but then multiply by 1 half is going to leave me with 1 half. And then over here, I'd have still 0, negative 1 half, and 0. So you can see by multiplying by a factor of, uh, by multiplying by a number, it's going to affect our graph. Now let's see what that looks like actually on a graph. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to graph you see, I'm actually just going to graph the first period of our function. So let's have this be 1, this be 2. Negative 1, negative 2, you can see it down there. Eh, almost there. All right, so let's graph this. So our important points that we've talked about, we have 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Now, graphing the original sine function, I know the highest it goes up is the maximum is at 1, then it crosses at 0, goes down to negative 1, and goes back up to 0. So it looks something like this. right? That's my sine graph. Now, if I want to graph, so that is sine of x. Now, if I want to graph 2 sine of x, it's still going to start at 0, but you can see the max point is now at 2. 
Then it goes back down to zero, and now goes down to negative two, and then back up to zero. So that's what we call our two sine of x. And then the last one we can graph would be the one half sine of x. And one half sine of x goes half the distance up. So it's only going to go up to one half, down to negative one half, but it still always meets the exact same x-intercepts that our original function did. So ladies and gentlemen, the amplitude just represents the half distance between the max values and the minimum values. So you can see here, my, the difference between my max and my min is 1. I'm sorry, is 2. So the half distance, the amplitude of sine of x is equal to 1, theoretically, which would actually be what it's being multiplied by, your a, which is 1. Here, my ma the distance between my max and my min is 4. So the half distance is 2. So you notice that the amplitude is what you're multiplying your function by, or the absolute value of what you're multiplying your function by. And then our blue, you can see the, the max distance between our maximum value and our minimum value is vertical distance of 1. So the half value, value of that is 1 half, which again, we notice that our blue function is multiplied by 1 half of x. So there he goes, ladies and gentlemen. That is your definition of amplitude.